We're taking a look back at Chase Roulier's time with the franchise as the former Washington Commander Center calls it a career. That and more on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome into this Friday episode of the Locked On Commanders podcast, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. And don't forget, you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. And you can continue the conversation with me on subtext at joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. So I'm your host, David Harrison at dharrison eighty two. On Twitter at D Harrison underscore 82 on threads. If you're jumping on to that new social media platform, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for Commander Country Part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. Here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers. And as always, I appreciate your continued support for the program. On today's episode of Locked On Commanders, we're going to discuss a Washington player who got to live his NFL dream even if only for one game. And we're going to talk about where Sam Howell stacks up when compared to other Washington quarterbacks playing with star receiver Terry McLaurin. But we're starting today's episode discussing Chase Roulier retiring at the age of 29 from the National Football League, announcing it earlier this week on his Instagram page. Chase said, quote, it is a very difficult thing to say goodbye to something that has been a large part of my life for over two decades. I can hardly remember a time in my life that I wasn't lacing up and putting on the pads every fall. Through all that time, I have learned some of the biggest lessons, gotten through huge heartbreaks, and had a few of my life's greatest joys. I have lived most of my life with football, and because of this, I knew it would be very difficult for me to decide when to move on. Two years ago, I would have never thought I'd be writing this right now. But in those two years, I've seen two major injuries, two invasive surgeries, two multi-month couch-ridden times, two rehabilitation marathons, two tall mental hurdles to climb, and two of everything else in between. These two years have also given me a lot of time to reflect and gain clarity on my priorities in life. This decision has not been an easy one, but after lots of prayer and processing, I'm confident that it is the right one. Thank you to my wife, Sarah, for keeping me going through my hardest times and for always being my biggest cheerleader. Thank you to my family for their unwavering support for helping me to achieve this dream. Thank you to my teammates, coaches, and agents for believing in me and for helping me grow each and every day. And lastly, thank you to all the fans who have shown me love and support through the good and bad times. Thank you to everyone who has supported me in this journey and everyone who will support me in my next chapter. End quote. Chase really entered the National Football League as a sixth round pick in the 2017 NFL draft and was the fourth center taken in that year's draft. Of the sixth uh, six centers that were taken in total. Rulier has played the second most games with 69 of them and has started 63. Again, the second most out of that class. Ethan Pochich, Pat Elf, Elfline, and Kyle Fuller are all still active from those six centers, six linemen, one of them a guard now, uh, now that Rulier has retired in his first season. Rulier graded out as PFS 24th ranked center in run blocking among centers that had 450 or more snaps, and he ranked 21st in pass blocking. Again, coming out as a six-round draft pick. In his second season, however, in 2018, Rulier grew to over 1,000 snaps played for Washington and also became the 12th graded center in run blocking among those with 1,000 snaps or more and the 10th graded uh, in pass blocking. Rulier was top 20 again in 2019 and topped out in 2020 as PFF's seventh best run blocker and second best pass blocker. And it was following that season that Washington signed him to a four-year contract extension worth $40.5 million. $19 million of that was guaranteed at the time. And that is the two years ago that Chase Roulier was talking about where he never thought he would be in the situation that he was this week or making the decision that he was this week. Because unfortunately, that's where the Chase Roulier story really peaked. And Roulier suffered a broken left fibula in 2021, injured his right knee in 2022, against the Detroit Lions in the waning moments of that game. And then this offseason, the commanders went out and they signed free agent offensive lineman Nick Gates away from the New York Giants. And again, before Nick Gates ever even really spoke to us, we had Patricia Train of the Locked on Giants podcast on, and she basically told us that Nick Gates was looking for a move to go be a center. And that was kind of the first signal that the assumption we all kind of made in the back of our heads that we didn't really want to admit 
that Chase Roulier's time in Washington was probably done really kind of started to fru- to come to, to reality and into focus. And then in April in the NFL draft, Washington drafted Arkansas center Ricky Stromberg in the third round of the NFL draft. And again, you don't draft, you don't sign a free agent to the kind of money that they did Nick Gates and his priorities of being a center, which he then com- confirmed with us uh, in, his, in, his, in his introductory press conference. And you don't spend a third round draft pick on a guy at a position that you feel like you already have two starting caliber players at and all of that basically sealed Roulier's fate, uh, and he ended up being a post June first cut. In mid June, it was reported that the Arizona Cardinals had brought Chase Roulier in for a workout, but that apparently didn't go as well as the two sides would have hoped. And now, after six seasons in the NFL, the former sixth round pick out of Wyoming is calling it a career. As he retires, he is fifth all time in Washington history and starts by a center and eighth all time among centers in games played. Now, of course, we all are going to wish Chase really the best of luck moving forward and nothing but but success and where his life goes uh, from here, whether that be in business, in charitable foundations, in coaching, in broadcasting. Who knows where Chase Roulier's life is going to take him, but we wish him the best of luck. And you know what? We saw Ryan Kerrigan show up last year during training camp to be a coach. Why not see Chase Roulier? I mean, Terrell Wharton is going to be the offensive line coach, but who says they couldn't use uh, another assistant offensive line coach on the roster, especially one uh, with Chase Roulier's talent and proven ability. So uh, an unfortunate ending to Chase Roulier's career. I think just like Chase said two years ago, none of us would have expected uh, this to be happening at this point in time. But unfortunately, that is the brutality uh, of the game sometimes. And that is unfortunately the way that Chase Roulier's career is going to come to an end. So from one career end uh, and again, we do wish Chase really all the best moving forward from one career ending to basically one that's just getting started. Star receiver Terry McLaurin is throwing his support behind yet another quarterback. And that's coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to 200 That's right. If you bet $20, you will land $200 in bonus bets, whether you win or lose. The Washington Nationals are hosting the Texas Rangers on Friday night. And if you make the right bet on that game, whether it be money line against the spread, whether it be the first home run, a, a litany of Major League Baseball options to bet on at FanDuel, if you make the right bet, then you can win money and you can get up to $200 in bonus bets if it is your first bet on FanDuel. That's $200 that you can then spend on anything and everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. And all of it's on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on Major League Baseball than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today by visiting FanDuel.com slash locked on and get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel official betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thanks again for being a Locked On Commanders, your first listen or view today and every day, every day. Let's come back next week. We have another, another uh, position group preview. We're going to uh, talk about some line play here in the the next uh, position group preview. And then, of course, we got another. We've got another mailbag coming up on Tuesday or Wednesday, rather, as well. Uh, So, if you are on Tuesday, sorry, if you have a question that you want to get into that mailbag, drop it in the YouTube comments. Hit me up in email form or on Twitter, or of course via subtext at joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders. Terry McLaurin had some things to say in a recent interview published by the team's in house media, specifically about second year quarterback Sam Howell. Terry said, quote, He showed some great signs of growth against Dallas last year, and now for this whole season, we get to see what he does. He has a quiet command about him. He comes into the huddle. He knows what he's doing. He's super smart, and he's picked up the system really well. At the end of the day, he's going to give us a chance to make plays on the outside, end quote. And, of course, that is super exciting, right? Sam Howell coming in, having that cool, calm, collected approach. Every day, as you've heard me talk about, getting to know Sam from last year, third-string quarterback, fifth-round rookie, all the way up to being a second second string quarterback after Carson gets injured and then eventually a starting quarterback. And now here after an offseason full of QB1 talks and interviews and all these other things, 
And I can tell you right now, the Sam Howell is the same dude I met the first day as he is uh, today. So that I think is is very key and kind of what Terry McLaurin was talking about there. So, but this got me thinking a different. Angle. We've talked about that. We've talked about the maturity, the auto correctability. Let's look. Let's look at some stats. Let's kind of look at some some stacks of of stats and rank and shuffle these guys. Where does Sam Howell's debut with Terry McLaurin rank among Washington quarterbacks? That was really my question. In his first game with Terry, as a starting quarterback, Sam Howell connected with him three times for 74 yards and a touchdown. And, of course, they defeated the hated Dallas Cowboys. Now, that's a decent stat line. It's a good win against a division opponent, against a rival that everybody hates. So that's a that's a very high quality win as far as I'm concerned. And I think that when we stack these games, we're not just going to talk about this, the, the organic stats, the most catches, the most yards, the most touchdowns. But we got to look at the quality of the game, right? So that was his last. That was Terry McLaurin's last first game with a new starting quarterback, right? Terry McLaurin's played with nine starting quarterbacks. His last starting quarterback that he played for the first time was Sam Howell. Of course, he only got the one game, right? His first first game with an NFL starting quarterback was, of course, his first game ever. And in that game, the starting quarterback was Case Keenum. And in that game, the two connected for five catches, 125 yards, and they lost 32 to 27 to the Philadelphia Eagles. The next starting, the next time that Terry McLaurin had a game with a first time starting quarterback in his career came in week five of that same season, week, week five, 2019. That quarterback was Colt McCoy. And they, he got the start, Colt did, uh, in a 33-7 to loss to the New England Patriots. McLaurin and McCoy, however, connected three times for 51 yards. Now, same season, third starting quarterback that Terry McLaurin got his first ever start with, and that was Dwayne Haskins. Week 9 of 2019, Dwayne Haskins' first start with Terry McLaurin came in a 24-9 to loss to the Buffalo Bills. In that game, Haskins and McLaurin connected four times for 39 yards. Three starting quarterbacks in 2019, Terry McLaurin's rookie season, and that's how the first three games he had with new starting quarterbacks went uh, in that rookie year. Fast forward to his sophomore year, week five of 2020, he gets his first start with Kyle Allen as the starting quarterback, and it came in a 30-10 to 10 loss to the Los Angeles Rams. There's a little bit of a trend starting to build here, right? Alex Smith also played in that game, and McLaurin ended up with three catches and 26 yards. Smith got his first start with McLaurin in week 10 of 2020, and he and McLaurin connected seven, seven times for 95 yards, and Washington lost 30-27 to to the Detroit Lions. Now, in the wild card round of that year's playoffs, quarterback Taylor Heineke got his first start with Terry, and in that came in a 31-23 loss to the eventual Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Heineke Hive was born. McLaurin came away with six catches for 75 yards. Of course, McLaurin's first start with quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick came in week one of 2021, the following season, but that didn't very last very long. And then Taylor Heineke came in. Washington lost 20 to 16, and McLaurin had four catches and 62 yards. Heineke's first regular season start with Terry McLaurin was the following week, but technically he already had a start with Terry, so we're not going to count that uh, in here. Now, the final quarterback before Howell to get his first start with Taylor, Terry McLaurin uh, on the roster was Carson Wentz in week one of the 2022 season. In that game, McLaurin had two catches, 58 yards, a touchdown, and the Commanders got a 28-22 to win. All of that means the only quarterbacks to win their first starts with Terry McLaurin on the field are Carson Wentz and Sam Howell. Those two quarterbacks are also the only two to throw a touchdown to him in their first starts together. But don't let that anecdotal fact keep you from supporting Sam Howell. Anyway, I know it didn't go well for Carson Wentz, but that doesn't mean Sam Howell is doomed to the same fate. Despite having nine different starting quarterbacks in four seasons, Terry is still the fourth receiver in franchise history to have three straight thousand yard receiving seasons. Art Monk did it 1984 to 1986. Gary Clark 1989 to 91 and Henry Ellard 94 to 96. And now McLaurin is just 2000 yard receiving seasons from tying both Monk and Clark with uh for, for five uh in franchise history which would be tied for the number one or for the most thousand yard receiving seasons in franchise history with any luck sam howell and terry mclaurin are going to get to start more together than any of those other quarterbacks uh and connecting of course with mclaurin 
will go a long way towards making that happen. And McLaurin is confident in Sam Howell's accuracy, saying, quote, his accuracy is something that really stands out. He knows how to hit those hole shots. He can really throw the ball away in man situations, really push the ball through zones, and he gives you a chance to catch the ball and run with it, end quote. And of course, leaning on McLaurin and his 63 games worth of experience in the NFL would be very wise for Sam Howell, who has just one game of experience in the National Football League. Speaking of Washington players with only one game of experience, that was the recent subject of an interesting ESPN article. And we're going to talk about that next coming up on Locked On Commanders. Brooke Pryor of ESPN.com recently talked with some of the 1,432 players who have appeared in just one NFL game at the end of their career. So none of these guys are active, right? So none of these players that we're talking about are active players that still have the opportunity to play in more than one game, right? These are guys whose careers are over. 1,432 of them have come and gone with only one game played in the National Football League. According to the ESPN.com article, again, Brooke Pryor, those guys are being called cup of coffee guys, right? So a cup of coffee doesn't take you very long to drink. If you're having a meeting over a cup of coffee, it's not a very long meeting. So uh, you talk about short careers being cup of coffee guys. And in the article, Buffalo Bills general manager Doug Whaley actually says to those guys, I know everybody, quote, I know everybody thinks, oh, poor, for, oh, poor them for having a cup of coffee. But to really experience your lifelong dream and to walk out on the field in an NFL game and the fans and experience that, people pay a lot of money for it. That's a major, major accomplishment. End quote. One of those cup of coffee players that was uh, featured in the article is former Washington safety Jordan Bernstein. Uh, his one game that he got to play in in the NFL took place on September 9th, 2012, on the road to play the New Orleans Saints, and he got 15 snaps on special teams. Now, it was his first game in the NFL after being drafted. It was his rookie season, week one of the NFL season. And unfortunately, it was his last because uh, as a seventh round rookie that season, he was injured in the fourth quarter after another Washington player rolled up from behind him uh, on a block on a special teams play, tearing his ACL, MCL, PCL, and patellar tendon. Bernstein said, quote, I went from being one of the fastest players on the team to being told on Monday that I probably would not walk, jog, or do any of these things without a limp, my response was, well, what's the recovery time? End quote. Bernstein tried to mount a comeback in 2013, the next season, but he was cut by the team because uh, apparently his knee just was not ready for full football action. He got several NFL workouts in 2014, but he actually ended up partially re-tearing his ACL in one of those, uh, setting him back again. And unfortunately, it just was not meant to happen. And Bernstein never caught on with another NFL team uh, during his efforts to to stay in the NFL. Now, according to the ESPN article, for the past six years, Bernstein has been running ground up sports performance in Colorado Springs, which trains uh, kids, young athletes in the area. And he said, quote, I'm very grateful for where I am at this point in time with our business and with where we're at being able to keep growing. And I just love it. I really found something that rivals that feeling that I had with football, end quote. And I think that's really what it's all about. You know, sometimes uh, every day, as you've heard me say this on this program before about some players, uh, Chase Rulier, unfortunately, right now is one of those guys. Sometimes your body just doesn't agree with your career choice. And when your body tells you that it doesn't like your career choice, you have to go a different direction. You have to pivot and you have to, unfortunately, sometimes find something else to do. Uh, so Chase Rulier is on that path. Bernstein has has already walked that path. And now he's, uh, you know, apparently found something that gives him uh, as much of a, of a fulfilled feeling as it can, you know, relate to being on the NFL field. I, I've never played on an NFL field, so I can only imagine I've stood on an NFL field, and and even that just as not not even being a player is is pretty exhilarating. So I can only imagine what it's like being a player on the on the on the NFL field. So certainly understand how rough that could be to get over, especially when you've done it, especially when you've been on the field. And you know, look, I think within the group of the NFL fraternity, certainly the guys who only got to do it for one game, one week probably feel a little short change, right? They probably feel like they got chipped out of something or, you know, what could have been all of those things. But I think when you look at the total human condition and the amount of Americans who grow up watching, celebrating and, and, and living and breathing football, uh, they're, they're actually a, a part of a very, very rare portion of the population that gets to say that they made it to the NFL. They put on the suit, they put on the pads, they stood on the field, they took a snap, uh, you know, and look, you know, relatively speaking, that's something that's certainly 
uh, great to hold on to. So the fact that Bernstein and, and some other players, and honestly, they're they're all some of them are heartbreaking, like Bernstein's is. But you you know, I, I highly recommend you go to ESPN.com. Uh, it's not an ESPN Plus article, so you can read it for free uh, and go read that. There's some really good stories in there of guys, not just you know Washington guys. Um, but they did. You know what I mean? I think I think uh, the GM, I think Whaley, the GM from Buffalo, he's he's 100 right. These guys have to live a dream, uh, even if it was only for one game. That most people will never get to live. So while it's sad that Bernstein only got the one game, uh, that's one more game than most football lovers are ever going to get. So that is an achievement all of its own. I congratulate him for getting that. I also congratulate him for finding this new path and new fulfillment. And I thank you for making it to the end of the week. It's uh, it's Friday. So enjoy your weekend. Whatever plans you have, please be safe while you're doing them. Coming up next week, we're going to be back every day or Every day, I need your questions for our Tuesday mailbag. Once again, that's always a good time. So I'm really looking forward to that. Monday, we've got our next positional preview episode. So make sure you come back for that and everything else the rest of the week. If you want to add questions, put them in the YouTube comments, hit me on Twitter, or email them to lockedoncommanders at gmail.com or send them to me directly via subtext. And don't forget, you can talk to me about questions about anything else one on one just by heading over to join subtext.com slash locked on commanders. So start that up today. You'll get your first two weeks for free. And then if you want to stick around, you can. If you don't, that's okay. Uh, I'm not going to block you or ban you by any means. Thank you so much for making me a part of your day, part of your routine. And if you have anything else Washington Commanders related you want to discuss or share, make sure you also follow me on Twitter at dharrison82. If you're on threads, dharrison underscore 82. Until we speak again, please be safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you.